But, you know, you two have been kind of talking uh, smack to each other about board games all night. And I think this next group uh, really put together an application to let you do it in, in, a, in, a, in a place far away from each other. So it doesn't, you know, turn, turn out too crazy. Um, nice. I, I really like meta apps, you know. Uh, and so uh, this next app, Game Night, uh, was put together as a means of uh, creating your own online sandbox to really play games and uh, any game of your choice. So let's hear it from Game Night. Hi everyone, welcome to Game Night. My name is Hyunju, this is Joshua, Matthew, Tim, and we're really happy to introduce our gaming platform where users can feel like they're at their friend's house on a Saturday night drinking beer, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you can join a game, an open-ending game, or create a game where you can drop in a board of your choice, uh, your player pieces, and set the rules. And you can uh, keep in, in in, you can keep uh, contact with your friends um, with real-time communication through uh, face chat and through the messenger. And I'll pass it over to Josh. Thanks, Sanju. In order to allow for the interactivity that we wanted in real time on our application, we made extensive use of sockets. When a user enters our site, there's about 20 different states that are passed back and forth between client and server. As you can see, when you're in your lobby, uh, you can see other users who are online. You can also uh, chat with people and let them know what game you'd like to play and break into rooms. You can also see the rooms as they're created and the games that are being played there. When you enter a room, the first thing that you're prompted to do is start your camera. This is one of the main challenges we faced as a team, as we wanted up to four live video feeds in a single room. Um, in order to achieve this, we used WebRTC, which allowed us to create a peer-to-peer -peer connection on another server, which gave our own server the freedom to uh, better manage a very complex game state. Um, you're also able to drop in pictures in three different ways once you're in the lobby. You can drop it in as a background picture, which is your game board. You can also drop in pictures that only you see that are resizable. And you can also drop pictures to everyone's screens that appear as tokens. We did this through a drop zone that was connected to the Cloudinary API. Cloudinary gave us a unique URL for every image that was dropped that we could then render onto an HTML5 canvas. To let you know a little bit more about our canvas and our game state, I'm going to pass it off to Matt. Thanks, Josh. <clears throat> so yeah, as Josh mentioned, one of the things that's challenging about an application like this is there's a whole lot of state that's created by the game board. And then some of that's asymmetric, and we're also trying to share it across multiple clients. Um, in managing that, we really got to know the power of Redux. We have seven combined reducers working together with the sockets, and it really took a lot of energy to find the best form data and actions to keep track of all these moving parts. The moving parts themselves, the dragging, dropping, resizing, drawing, is a layered HTML5 canvas. We use a library called React Conva for that, which is a React wrapper for the Conva HTML5 library. And while HTML5 gives you a lot of interactivity, it also comes with some, the canvas specifically, it also comes with some expensive DOM operations. And also the rendering context itself intrinsically relies on certain internal state that you don't really have access to and make some destructive actions that aren't necessarily going to play nice with the immutable principles of Redux. But ultimately, the speed and responsiveness we got out of using React um, really made it worth it for any small trade-offs we had to make in terms of getting those two paradigms to work together. And it also gave us a ton of modularity. So we had like two main views and over 22 components making everything reusable, which really sets us up nicely for the extensible vision we have for the future of the application. And for more on that, I'm going to pass it off to Tim. Thanks, Matt. Uh, as you can see, real-time interaction and flexibility are the centerpieces to our application. And through our, uh, through our implementation of this app, we developed an app that not only serves as a platform to provide the users the abilities to create contents for interaction uh, through games like D&D, but also a platform for other developers to co uh, collaborate uh, through the modularity of the app. Uh, in essence, other collaborators will be able to add features um, to plug into our app uh, through um, to further enhance the experiences of the users uh, with uh, relative ease. Uh, finally, as our near future goals, we like to uh, implement contents like uh, deck of cards and pre-built uh, games for the users to utilize into our app. And uh, for more information, check us on GitHub and come play with uh, us at game night. Thank you. I 
think I might be joining your game night. So uh, <laughs> definitely a cool app. No, I I thought um, I, first of all I I I think D and D is like making a comeback because I've seen more and more people playing it. So definitely um, something I've noticed. But what I liked about that. It was just so clever in kind of breaking up the core components of what gaming is and then like making it easy to adapt to. That was really cool. Um, but I think, you know, having the WebRTC and having this idea of dropping images that I can see, images that I can't see, die, it's enough to, you know, you can play, I could see a lot of games being adapted to that, um, that model. Um, it's, so it's like, it's like board games and then like meta board games on tabletop. Yeah. Um, so really well executed. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love that sandbox model. 